Hey everybody, welcome. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. We're uh, talking pickleball today, indoor pickleball, and I'm sorry if I seem a little distracted. I am. I'm a little bit better on the pickleball court than I am with tech every once in a while. And I'm just checking to make sure that my tech is working and that I can answer all of your questions. I've got two computers going. I have <laughs> a pad and a phone. So hopefully. Hey everybody, welcome. Ooh, I'm sorry. I, I have to mute that. Wonderful day. Yeah, there's We're, one thing uh, I forgot, pickleball right? Today, indoor pickleball. And Come I'm on. sorry if I seem a little distracted. I am. I'm a little bit better on the pickleball court than I am with tech. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you always know something's going to happen. But anyway, I want to get to all your pickleball questions because, boy, you got a lot of questions about indoor pickleball. So I have prepared some things for you. We're going to talk about court surfaces and butt, uh, paddles and balls. And I know I even see Robert has a question about paddles with pop. And, yes, we're going to discuss that this evening as well, Robert. So... That's what we've. Got. That's what I've got for you. At any time, if you have a question, feel free to jump on in. I might not get to it immediately, but I'll get there because I can definitely see it inside the chat. And some of you sent in those questions early. Thank you so much. Uh, this is the first of. Um, a monthly live that I'll be doing. So the first Tuesday of every month at 4 p.m. Pacific, I will do a live with a special topic. And today happens to be indoor pickleball. So I want to jump right in to uh, talking about indoor pickleball. And the first thing let's talk about is the surface in indoor pickleball because it changes everything. And, you know, Playing inside, some of us who play outside, when we go inside, we think to ourselves, gee, this, now we're going inside. It's not as good or it's not as nice. But I did want to share something with you from a few, from a few people who sent this in earlier. And it said, hey, CJ, I read your message about playing indoors, and you make it sound like a second choice. Down here in Texas, indoors is the first choice. With high temperatures, humidity, and wind, it's not fun playing outdoors where it limits your shot selection. I will say this, the lob can become much more effective indoors. I would encourage your readers to contact gyms that will allow you to stripe off some indoor courts. We've got several in our area that do that. And it really increases the numbers of players um, that are excited about not having to schedule their play around the weather. So there's a positive uh, for it. And Vivian also added, she said, I always play indoors. Lives in Ontario, Canada, and it's either too hot or too cold to play outside. So indoors is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just different from playing outdoors. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We'll talk about the differences between indoor and outdoor pickleball. And for those of you who do play both, how to transition because most of us now would be going indoors uh, for the winter. So let's go ahead and I want to go ahead and get started here. Let's see. We're going to go here and I'm going to go to uh, gym courts, court floors. Uh, John asked a question. He said, why aren't there uh, outdoor surfaces inside? And typically there aren't. I did a little research and I found out that there are some surfaces that do cross over between indoors and outdoors, but they're pretty rare. Now, I'm going to guess that the longer, um, the more popular pickleball gets and continues to get, the more that people will, um, the more that floor companies are going to help us out because typically it's played on a gym floor. That's what you usually see. Now, I have seen pickleball and played on pickleball on in a hockey rink. Um, it's a little different there, but typically you see a gym floor. Now, the positive to the gym floor is it's softer and it's easier on our joints. And that was one comment that I got from a lot of indoor players. And, and I noticed that as well. It's much easier on my knees. And we already touched a little bit on the other positive about being inside is, is there aren't any elements. Now the negatives are traction. And when I talk about shoes, I'm going to talk about some specific things that can help you with traction in terms of your shoes. Um, but traction is a negative because a lot of times uh, gym floors may be older or they're not kept as clean. So if you're having a traction issue, 
and you're not sure if it's your shoes, the first place to look at is the court itself. Is the court uh, clean? And if not, you probably need to talk to the people who are running the gym. Is it being um, taken care of the way it should be taken care of? Uh, second thing is lighting. Lighting can be tough in gyms, especially older gyms. Uh, it can be really difficult to see the pickleball. Now we're going to talk about balls and we'll talk about them separately, but sometimes you can't change the lighting because uh, frankly that's a pretty expensive proposition is changing lighting. What you can do is change the color of the ball. And um, we've experimented with where, where I play, which is an indoor gym in the winter. We have different colors for different courts. Uh, two of the end courts have a green backdrop, a dark green backdrop, and certain colors are really hard to see on those two courts, whereas the middle court has a white background. So we even have different balls that we use on the different courts. So you probably would want to experiment with colors. Another downside are lines. I'm going to show you a picture in just a second of the lines on our court, but there are multiple, multiple lines. So when you're taping for pickleball, and typically people go in and they tape the courts for pickleball, I would make sure that you pick a color that's pretty noticeable. Compare, you know, go in, look at the gym floor, and gee, is there a color that is going to stand out? amongst all those lines. And the other thing that can be tough is space. Um, space both in terms of the number of courts. So as an example, we have eight courts in the summertime and it's three courts in the wintertime. Well, there tends to be a lot of waiting. Some clubs, including ours, has, ha, is, uh, use rally scoring as a method of making wait times go quicker. So that might be something for you to consider if you're running into that issue. And I do have a video on rally scoring on the channel. I know it changes the game. I know it changes the strategy of the game. But frankly, if you're just in there and you want to get some activity and you want to play, it may be more beneficial to do rally scoring and have things move more quickly than to stick with the traditional scoring. So space can really be an issue. Um, let me show you. I'm going to cut to that next picture. Ooh, I want to take myself out of this one. So hang on. There we go. Um, in that, you can see here, when you're looking at this picture, this is, this is the floor that I play on. And on this floor, our lines are blue, um, are blue lines. And you'll notice I'm pointing at the kid. That's the kitchen line there. And you can see the center line just to the right of it. But it definitely is somewhat confusing. Now we chose blue because you can see the green lines are for the key and basketball on the one side. We've got some uh, red lines on the other side. So there's a whole lot of colors in here. So blue actually worked the best for us. So I would just make sure that you check it out, check out where you're at, see if there's a different color where that might be beneficial to tape um, to tape your courts with. So that's kind of a bit about the floors. Let's talk about the balls. <laughs> oh, balls are different. Balls are different. So on the side, uh, the orange ball with the big holes, that is an indoor pickleball. And the yellow with the smaller holes are the outdoor pickleball. Now there are some differences between the balls. So let's just start with, you know, what an indoor ball is. So an indoor ball is A number one is going to be lighter. Not a ton lighter. It's like 0 0.08, I think, to 0 0.09 for an outdoor ball. But it is just a little bit lighter. The other thing about an indoor ball is it's a bit softer than the outdoor ball. Um, the outdoor ball is the harder plastic. It also tends to have a, a not as quite as smooth a surface as the outdoor ball. So the surface is just a little bit different. And then you'll notice we already said larger holes, right? So it has much larger holes than the outdoor ball. So it's smaller, it's lighter, it's a different ball. How is that going 
to play for you. You know, what, what is, what is that play like for you? So I'm coming back so you can see me talking. Um, cause we don't need to worry about the, uh, about the, um, outdoor ball right now. How is that going to play differently for you? So typically an indoor ball is a little bit easier to control. It's a little bit harder to hit a shot hard. That's typically what you find with an indoor ball. You may notice that your rallies inside are longer than your rallies are outside. Okay, that's possible. I notice, now we play with a Dura ball outdoors, a hard Dura outdoors, and we play with um, uh, an Onyx or the tubs in, inside. And what we notice on the inside is the ball, to me, the ball has a different bounce to it. It bounces maybe just a little bit higher, but because it's coming softer, it just has a little different feel to that bounce. It's not quite as peppy as the outdoor Dura ball. So you're definitely going to notice some differences in how it plays, which is kind of what Robert had asked, you know, how, how does that lead into paddles? So make sure to, if you have some questions, um, I'm kind of looking, I'm trying to, I know we've got a question about injury, but um, first I'm going to go into the, into the paddle. Um, if you got some questions, go ahead and put them in the live chat. So that's just a difference in what you're going to see in the balls. And that's how you can tell the balls are different. So, but that indoor ball, again, it's got the um, larger holes, lighter, softer, slightly smaller, weighs less. Um, talked about the playability already. It's easier to control, more difficult to hit it hard. Um, the multiple colors thing, I talked about that a little early on, where if you've got a lot of different colors, or try a lot of different colors to go with your lighting. There are even two-tone balls. We tried those. Didn't particularly like the two-tone balls. Um, but I can see how in some instances that would be a interesting color because as it's spinning, so half of it is like white and maybe the other half is black. And when it spins, it definitely looks more prominent. It just really has to match to me. It has to match what's in the background. And in our gym, as I said, we have a green, uh, the padding around the outside of the gym. So if you're having a hard time finding, you know, seeing the ball, try some different balls. But so we talked about how that plays. Oh, I didn't mean to go to shoes, but I wanted to talk about paddles for you, Robert. <laughs> and I will. I promise, because it's in here. I thought it was next, <laughs> but it's shoes. So I guess I'm just going to go to shoes, but I will touch on the paddles. So traction, I mentioned that early on. Traction can be an issue when we are inside and it's different, right? I, I mean, it is completely different. So once you've made sure that your floors are clean, a couple of things you can do is indoor shoes. Um, typically volleyball or basketball shoes. However, there are squash shoes, there are uh, racquetball shoes, and I didn't know this, but somebody asked me about shoes last week, and they asked about table tennis shoes. Yeah, I didn't know they made them, but I did a little research on table tennis shoes, and it sounds like the table tennis shoes would do really well for this as well, uh, for indoor pickleball, because all of those shoes are made for lateral motion. So that's why we want to make sure that if we're moving inside, we still want to have a court shoe that's made for lateral motion. Typically I play with volleyball shoes. It has a little bit different tread. It's made for the softer floor, made for the hardwood floor. Um, now I'm often asked, can I use my outdoor tennis shoes inside? Yes. Mine don't have the best traction inside. I get better traction out from the volleyball shoe uh, than I do from the outdoor tennis shoe. But you definitely, you don't want to revert to a running shoe or anything like that. Make sure it's an indoor court shoe and make sure the sole is clean. One of the things that I do before I leave for the courts is I take a cloth and 
wipe down the soles of the shoes so that they are nice and clean when I get to the courts you're going to get more traction from that typically you will see speaking of traction typically you will see at courts uh, basketball courts it, like a blue pad and it's a sticky pad it's it's large um, very large and players when they're playing basketball will step on that sticky pad and that sticky pad pulls the dirt off the sole of the shoe to give the shoes, shoes some added traction. So you may see those at, at your courts. That's what they're for. Uh, there's another little uh, device and I thought I was having trouble with my tech before I got on here. So <laughs> I didn't, um, I was going to have my shoe here, uh, court grabbers. I did a video on this and I'll put a link down below. It's a little device. It's about that big. It's a little black device that you put on the laces of your shoe and you put a solution onto that little device and then you wipe your sole your, on, on the top of your other shoe. So you're actually taking the bottom of one shoe and wiping it across the, this little device that's affixed to the top of your other shoe. Works really well. Uh, I love cork grabbers and I did a video about that I, I think a year or two ago. I'll put a link down in the show notes below if you want to see more information on that. But if you're having traction issues at your courts, make sure that you are looking at the soles of your shoes uh, because it, it is easier to slip and fall. Now, as somebody once said, um, somebody wrote in and said, yeah, it's a little different, but if you slip and fall, it doesn't hurt so bad. <laughs> and I would agree with you. Uh, slipping and falling doesn't quite hurt you. Uh, it doesn't quite hurt you as much. So give me one second. Sometimes it's a little hard with the glasses and seeing your questions. I know, Richard, you still have a question about paddles and... Oh yeah, gum bottom Asics is what um, uh, Cap Tim is uh, talking about. Gum bottom Asics shoes, they are a good shoe for indoors. Uh, but here's the here's and he makes a really good point. You don't want to use your indoor shoes outdoors. Indoor shoes are made for those hardwood floors so, and they have typically have a softer sole. So if you use those outside on the asphalt courts, you're going to trash those shoes pretty quickly. So you'd want to make sure that you don't, that you don't do that. Um, cool. Let's see. And one last one. And how do I prevent tennis leg? First it was my left and then it was my right. I, you know what? I'm not sure exactly what tennis leg is. I'm thinking it might be something in the ligaments of the knee, but if you tell me a little bit more about what it is, I might be able to give you a few suggestions because I'm going to guess it goes all to stretching, icings, all the basics. Not really mattering. It uh, doesn't really matter if it's an elbow or a wrist or things like that. There, when we suffer injury, it's usually either mechanics or we're not taking care of our body. So give me a few more details and I might be able to help you with that one. Now I know that, uh, uh, let's see, okay, let's see. Robert, you've probably been patiently waiting about paddles because that was one of the areas where I had a lot of questions on were paddles. And I had questions, let's see, I had should you use a heavier paddle inside or outside to have more power? Um, seems like uh, the balls might fly further. I had another question that's in indoor paddles. What? Um, and it was like, really? Yeah. Indoor paddles. Um, I don't think anyone makes an indoor paddle right now. Now I could be wrong <laughs> because pickleball is changing all the time and you're seeing people who weren't in pickleball two years ago are now making pickleball gear. So there could be some specific indoor paddles. As I know, there's a company that is making some specific indoor pickleball shoes. Um, but as of, to my knowledge, there's not a specific indoor paddle. But if you go back to what we talked about before, the floor is softer, the ball is different. It is harder to hit the ball. It's more difficult to hit the ball hard. I have a different paddle for indoors than I have for outdoors. The paddle indoor has a little bit more pop. Actually, it has a lot of pop. 
outside, I have a very difficult time controlling that paddle outside, which is why I don't use it. In fact, when I first purchased this paddle, I bought it at an indoor tournament. So I was at an indoor tournament. It was still, it was, it was, I think, my very first tournament that I played in. And it was an indoor tournament. I'd been playing outdoors primarily. I took my outdoor paddle inside and it just, I, it just wasn't working for me. So during this tournament, there was somebody there and who was quite knowledgeable. He says, well, you, you know, balls are different. They come off different. It's kind of exactly what I told you. He said, here, try this paddle. And I purchased that paddle specifically indoors. I still use that paddle inside, but it, it, it doesn't see the sunshine. It doesn't come outside because it just has too much pop. Uh, I have a very difficult time controlling the third shot and controlling the trajectory of my dinks. So I do not use that paddle outside. So even though there's not a specific indoor paddle, my suggestion to you would be to experiment. Try some different paddles and see which one you like best. Just because it works for you outdoors doesn't mean it's going to work for you indoors and vice versa. Hey Robert, give me a thumbs up if I answered that one for you or just let me know. Okay, um, before we get to rules, because that was another big question, are there different rules for indoors and outdoors? Um, he clarified a little bit about calf area um, and the Achilles. So here's what, in, in pickleball, our calves tend to get extremely tight. And a lot of that is because we're not stretching them. So in, in, I, first of all, you should stretch your body before you play pickleball. Most of us get out onto the court and you know how it is. Somebody says, hey, CJ, come on over. We need you right away. And you've hit three shots or you've hit 10 dinks and, and maybe two ground strokes. And now all of a sudden you're in a game and you're playing. And then we play and we play for two or three or four hours. And then after that time, um, maybe we go out with friends or whatever, but we don't stretch. We don't stop and we don't stretch. So I would recommend, A number one, doing dynamic stretching. And I have a couple of dynamic stretching videos that I will put links to down below. One is called uh, Five Minutes to Better Pickleball, and it really will make a difference for your body and warming up your body, including your calves. Um, now, if your calves are tight beyond the dynamic stretching, once you've warmed up your body, so once your body temperature has risen and, and you've warmed up your body a bit, I recommend that you take some additional time to do some stretching, uh, specifically the calf area. And then when, we're, when you're finished is to stretch afterwards. Uh, there is also a device, and there is a link into the show notes down there. It's a check out, it's called Check Out My Favorite Pickleball Gear. It's a device from Amazon. It looks like a little half circle. And you put your foot on it this way, and you stand up very tall, and it stretches the back of your calf. That device has been extremely helpful for me because I had a calf injury last year from skiing and it was very tight because of a, it was a blunt force injury um, because of the trauma to the leg and it has taken me a while to stretch it out. Uh, now, this is not substitute for going to your doctor. If you are really having pain and your pain's acute, you need to go to your doctor, you need to go to your physical therapist, they need to take a look at you because the last thing you want to do is tear an Achilles. I mean, that recoup is a long time in terms of um, uh, getting back and getting healthy. I mean, that's generally at least six months where you won't be playing pickball. And I think most people might really have a hard time. <laughs> if they weren't playing pickleball for six months. So uh, take care of that injury. And I'm just going to take a look because I th see a thumbs up. Yes, I will put some links down in the bottom below to the dynamic stretching. So hopefully that helps you. And again, if anyone else has any questions, go ahead and make sure that you put that in the little chat over there. All right. So the next one, and really kind of like the last thing I have for you is talking about rules, right? So rules. Are there different rules for indoor or outdoor? So first of all, let's go back to the balls because that always comes up. Balls that are approved for indoor or outdoor can be used on either one. 
Okay, so pretty simple. So even though there's the slight weight difference, a slight um, uh, one's a little heavier than the other, they can be used in either spot. Now, if you use an outdoor ball indoors, typically you see a little bit more skidding, especially the Duras. Um, the Duras, you know, they have a, it's a smoother plastic on that Dura, and when you put it on the gym floor, particularly on a gym floor, that ball tends to skid. And if you stand on the side of a pickleball court and watch a, a, another game, watch other players play, so you're standing on the side of the court, you can actually visibly see the ball skid. My recommendation is that if you're playing indoors, play with an indoor ball. Um, I think tubs and jugs are pretty popular for indoors. They're I believe Dura makes an indoor ball. That ball is not quite as popular. I know we don't play with that one here and other places that I've played inside. I don't see that ball as often. Not really sure why. I, I'm thinking playability issues. Uh, but definitely I would recommend if you're playing indoors, get the indoor specific balls. Um, the holes, it makes the ball bounce a little different, fly a little different. It just will help you. Uh, the rules are exactly the same. In fact, the only place in the rule books where it talks about indoor is when it specifies the ball. So the rules are exactly the same. Now, I'm going to qualify that and take something from my old sport, which was golf. We used to have something called local rules. So when you go to a golf course, uh, the rules of golf apply, but there might be a special situation at that golf course that called for that golf course to make a rule specifically to help play at that course. As an example, at our gym, multi-use gym, it has basketball nets and those basketball nets, right? So they're down and then they come up and they come up flat. Those basketball nets can be in play if somebody hits a lob. And as I said early on, the lob, which is a very difficult shot to hit to begin with. Of course, not real long. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of the defensive lob one from the baseline. I like the offensive lob one done from the from the non-volley zone. But one from the baseline, it's a little tougher shot outside um, because of the elements, particularly the wind. It impacts the ball. Inside, the lob can be much more effective. What we were experiencing when we first started to play inside, people would try to lob, which is great. Try, experiment with it. See if it's something that can work for you. People would lob. It would hit the uh, basketball net that was way up in the air. And originally, we played that as a do-over. Okay, so we would just say, all right, do it again. Play that, replay that point, right? We were going to replay that point. Well, People were doing it so often, and at times they were maybe uh, in a very defensive situation and didn't have many outs, so instead they just tried to hit the net. So we changed it a little bit. Uh, if you hit the net, if you hit that net which is way up on the air when you try a lob, that's a fault. Now that's our own specific indoor rule and it's specific to our court. I have played at other courts where the basketball nets don't come in to play at all. So I think it's just, you may just need to use some common sense based on your location. The other one, and I talked about this earlier, is rally scoring, is can, you know consider instituting rally scoring. If you've got a lot of people playing and not much in the terms of court space, and frankly, you know, we have a fairly large gym. It's a regulation regulation size basketball court. We can only fit three courts in there. Um, I know that a lot of people run into that same problem. So if it's a problem for your club, I guess you have to ask yourself: Is it better to have more people playing? Um, and you know, certainly rally scoring will speed up play. 
Do I like rally scoring? Well, it's tactically it's different. But if it speeds up play, especially in the winter, we'll go ahead and we'll do rally scoring, and I don't have a problem with it. I know people have some really strong, <laughs> very, very strong feelings about rally scoring. But in any event, that's what I have got for you today um, on everything indoor. So uh, hopefully, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. Uh, by the way, just wanted to bring you up to speed uh, December, which it will be December 3rd will be the next live that I'll be doing. And since it's going to be the holidays, I'm going to be talking about finding places to play <laughs> over the holidays, right? Hopefully you can maybe play some pickleball while you're on vacation. Some of the etiquette that goes along with that in going to a new place, because I know that's been a hot topic lately. People have been asking me a lot about that, how to find it, how to fit in there, as well as how to stay fit while you're traveling so that you don't get to January and all of a sudden you're carrying an extra 10 pounds on the pickleball court. So if you got any questions, um, make sure that you send them to me. My email is down below in the contact information and um, look for a new video every single Saturday here on the channel and I hope you have enjoyed the live. I'll clean up some of the technical difficulties the uh, next time we get together. But until then, I always say together we can train smart, live bold, and age well. Good night, everybody.